Welcome to the Culture Proof Podcast. I'm Miki. And I'm Will. And today we want to talk about um, an old thorn that just doesn't go away, uh, critical race theory, but maybe not in the way that you might imagine. There is new information out that the police in Nashville will not confirm the authenticity of the alleged manifesto of the Nashville shooter. You understand um, this is a story that many people had um, an interest in, um, not only because of the details of it, but just because when you think about taking the lives of innocent children, there's something that just kind of really strikes at the core, you know, of how we um, feel about this emotionally. And so anyway, there's new information out. Steven Crowder on his podcast on Monday released um, documents or manifesto pages hmm. that seem to be also verified by the Daily Wire. Now, this causes a huge problem because we know that in the wake of this shooting, there was a huge move to keep all of this information pretty hush-hush. Like, yeah. we've got a manifesto, we've got some pages of a diary, we've got even um, a memoir, um, as I understand, but we're not releasing this information because we don't want to re-victimize the victims, we don't want to harm the families and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, we really felt like there was something more sinister. I thought it had to do with maybe gender ideology, but as we look learn with the information that is out now, there may be something that is even more concerning than that. Mm. Um, because when you look at the proliferation of critical race theory and how it motivates people's actions up to, and in this case, it looks like including um, the slaughter of innocence, we can't ignore this any longer. So we're yeah. going to talk about that today on Culture Proof. But first, so we want to say a huge thank you to the premier sponsor of the Culture Proof podcast, BJU Press mm -hmm. Homeschool. We are so excited. We trust BJU Press Homeschool in helping us educate our kids and form in them a strong biblical worldview. Listen, if you are looking for a curriculum that is not compromised, if you are looking for a curriculum that goes back to the eternal word of God and that it is woven into every aspect of what your kids are learning, then BJU Press Homeschool may just be the curriculum that you're looking for. It certainly was the one that we were looking for. We cannot recommend it enough. The right balance between online classes and parent-led instruction makes BJU Press Homeschool a fit for so many parents. Um, the Addison's we are one of those so many parents. <laughs> we want to encourage you to check out our friends over at BJUPressHomeschool.com. That's BJUPressHomeschool.com. When you go exploring and when you support them, you are supporting the work of Culture Proof, and That's we right. appreciate it. BJUPressHomeschool.com. They are the premier sponsors of the Culture Proof podcast, and we cannot be more thrilled. Mm -hmm. All right, Will the Great, let's yes. get into some of this information that is out this week. It's incredibly troubling, very disturbing, but also there's a lesson in it. If we're willing to learn and if we're willing to implement, there's a way that we may be able to spare our kids the mental um, I would say assault that they are enduring as they are being taught critical race theory ongoingly in yeah. K-12 schools and certainly institutions of higher education. But let's look at this story here. This is from the Daily Signal. The Nashville, T Tennessee Police Department addressed documents published Monday by commentator Stephen Stephen Crowder purporting to be the manifesto of Nashville school shooter Audrey Hale. The police statement did not confirm whether the document published by Crowder or these documents were in fact part of the school shooter's manifesto. They also didn't deny it. That's Mickey's commentary. <laughs> right. uh, quote, the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department is in communication with the Metropolitan Department of Law as an investigation begun this morning continues into the dissemination of three photographs of writings during an online discussion about Covenant School. The photographs are not MNPD crime scene images, which is really interesting because now there's the question of how were these images secured? Where did they come from? How did Steven Crowder get them? And also, I will add again, they have been verified to be authentic by outlets like the Daily Wire. Let me continue here. Quote, the police department has been in contact with the representative of Covenant families. Um, the police department counselors are available to assist them in coping with the emotional trauma caused by the dissemination. Now, I, I do believe that there is a cause for sensitivity to mm -hmm. the families. Yeah. Um, I think we just can't even understand that type of suffering. And it doesn't matter 
it doesn't matter how often it happens in culture. We never want to normalize that. We right. never want to see that as a normal part of our culture and what we are to expect and just ordinary engagement. Mm -hmm. At the same time, though, when you have someone who sets out to murder people and it's not random, mm. it's intentional, right. it's calculated, and as we are learning and knew from the beginning, because this manifesto and some of these documents that are still not public were in the shooter's car. Yeah. So, so we knew that there was a motive that was being kept from us. We knew that there was some type of narrative that was being protected. And now I think we're having sort of mm. a greater insight into what um, pieces of that narrative might actually be. Yeah, they even said that it will be coming out soon. And that was like a year, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so the thing is, you know, that they're trying to hide something. And I think it's because the was in, uh, in those diaries or that manifesto is something that will expose what the shooter believed. Mm -hmm. And that is not uh, prudent or that's not what people want to get out. You know, so the thing is, they're hiding it for a reason. It's not just it's not just because of the victims' families and things like that. Which, man, I understand that. I think it's because they don't want what the shooter was thinking to get out there because it's going to uh, turn on them. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, our culture has a vested interest in preserving the narrative of critical race theory, and you'll see why I bring that into the conversation. But there is a vested interest in, in the division that is caused by critical race theory mm -hmm. and the disintegration of the minds that consume that kind of teaching. Yeah. And so you can imagine that there are people who kind of don't want to come face to face with the family activists, mm -hmm. right? Because you've got the parents who have been vigilant in saying, I don't want my kids taught critical race theory. This is toxic. It's insidious. And now <laughs> you may have sort of the worst First case example of what critical race theory does to a person's mind and what it does ultimately to that person's um, yeah. behavior and yeah. what those out those the outflow of those actions actually are. Looking at the Daily Wire, this is what we find. We find that on Monday, Stephen Crowder released three pages of documents, and the Daily Wire also said that they verified that those are actual, authentic documents. So this is not sensationalism. This is not, you know, somebody maybe dropped something here. These are actual documents. And now, working from that information, what do we find in those documents? I want to warn you that this may be disturbing to hear and quite mm -hmm. troubling. I do this um, not to be gratuitous. I, I do this because I think it's necessary for us to understand where the teaching of critical race theory could go. Yeah. We already see that it's being planted in the hearts of our kids as they are being indoctrinated daily in this country. But what is it doing to their minds? And how do we see this as maybe once they, they reach the place where I need an external outlet or I need a way to express mm -hmm. um, my disdain, even for my own culture? <laughs> And and I'm gonna I'm gonna make the case for that. I got we got several clips that we want to play for you here. The question is, how does this expression begin to grow or continue to grow in our culture? So the Daily Wire here, um, some of the things found in the pages of the manifesto that were released on Monday, uh, quote, kill those kids. Those crackers going to private fancy schools with those fancy khakis and sports backpacks with their daddy's Mustangs and convertibles. This was what Audrey Hale left behind. Quote, I wish to shoot you weak and then expletive. Mm. Your mop yellow hair want to kill all you little crackers. Bunch of little expletives. Your white privileges. Mm. Those words. That's one of those words that... I Bunch of little <laughs> expletives with your white privileges. Yeah. Now, yeah. okay. That's straight out CRT. <laughs> so when we start talking about white privilege mm -hmm. and when we start talking about white fragility and when we start talking about those who are the oppressors and the oppressed and when we start telling kids that you fit into either one of those categories. The, the, this is how we categorize you. You are either the oppressor or you are oppressed. And then we tell those kids, there's no way that you can make amends for what you have done if you are the oppressor. Mm. And if you are oppressed, there's no way that you can get out of it because right. it has nothing to do with socioeconomic status. It has everything to do with those things that are immutable about you. Mm. So the color of your skin, your gender, right? You cannot change these things. And then to the oppressor, 
to the oppressor, what is taught is that you are pro perpetually the oppressor. Mm -hmm. So think about this to the mentally unstable, right? How do I make amends for this? Well, I can't, I can't repent for something that I haven't done. Right. I haven't done anything except just be the color of skin that I am, right? Like I, I have, this is what I've done. And there's no way for me to rectify that. I can't change that. So what I've got to do is I've got to be an expressive ally. So mm. how can I express that I'm an ally of the cause? Well, I've got to take matters into my own hands and I've got to exterminate these future oppressors. There are oppressors while, while they live. Now, if this is in the manifesto and, and it seems that these documents are mm -hmm. authentic, then this tells us a lot more than we may have imagined about yep. this shooter. There's a reason why they don't want this to come out. Yes. Look, again, it said early on, it will come out soon. For them to hold it this long, somebody that has some power and that's like, you know, is a gatekeeper said, nope. We can't let this out because this is going to expose too much. These, this is just like a little bit, three pages of a well, hundred page documents or whatever, you know? So man, I can imagine what else is in there that yes. they don't want to come out. And it seems to me that it's uh, intentional. Like they, they're doing this because they, they don't want the cover to be blown. I mean, listen, it was calculated. It was intentional. It was targeted and it was hateful. It was hateful. When we talk about hate crimes in this country and we talk about, you know, identifying those hate crimes, there are certain people that we easily identify their crimes as hate crimes. And mm -hmm. it depends on who the crime was perpetrated against. Like, it's like, we have no problem calling it out as a hate crime, but here we have left in the shooter's manifesto that this is a hate crime. And yet we don't have a lot of talk about that. In mm -hmm. fact, I think for many of us, when we read about this, we learned about this happening in real time, we kind of went to maybe the mental breakdown of those who are confused over their gender mm -hmm. identity. Oh, yeah. We thought that this was what we saw manifesting, mm -hmm. but now we know that there's something way more sinister at work that yes, there was a mental breakdown, but it was also fueled by a racist ideology. Mm. by an ideology that was given to partiality. And, and it's amazing because it almost seems a little bit counterintuitive that you've got a white shooter who goes into a school mm -hmm. where uh, predominantly the kids are white. Yeah. And, and she sees them as privileged and she sees them as the oppressors that need to be taken out. She yeah. further wrote in this manifesto, quote, mm -hmm. want to kill all of you little crackers. Mm. Again, I hope I have a high death count. I'm, I'm, I'm continuing to quote here. I'm ready. I hope my victims aren't. Mm. She also wrote, ready to die. Wow. Ready to die. Listen, it is, it is troubling to read content like that and to know that the authorities involved had this content and yet kept it from the American people. It makes yeah. me wonder, why would they do that? Yeah, yeah. And even to your point, just about, you know, how initially we probably went to the transgender or, you know, that whole uh, battle there or, or confusion and not to the CRT uh, mode. But, man, all that stuff is related. Mm -hmm. so think, about, think about it. If you're part of the privileged class, as they would say, you are heterosexual. You are, you know, yeah, white oh, men. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, Christian. Christian. So that has to all be, you know, suppressed or, or, or pressed down. You know, mm -hmm. and so this stuff is related. So CRT and, you know, the confusion, the sexual confusion, man, they're related. And yeah. I think, you know, we have to see it as that because, man, it's it's very it's really intentional. You know, what CRT uh, has done is is doing the, yes. the people who are pushing that stuff out there. And man, it's it's linked that the sexual confusion and the hatred that we see uh, in critical race theory. I mean, it, it's it's it's. It's akin. Yes, you know? absolutely. It's wicked. It, it's really wicked. It teaches a type of self-loathing yeah. and it teaches a type of self-hatred. But then also for those who are the victims, mm -hmm. it creates this type of like, I can't do. I mean, it's there's a helplessness that it creates. And, and you can see why it's necessary to keep these people, both parties, in a perpetual state of guilt Right. Mm -hmm. Like I, I feel guilty that I'm born into this community. I feel guilty that I'm born into this color skin. And then also you've got the other perpetual victims that, man, somebody owes me something. Mm. 
mm -hmm. and I'm angry about what this person owes me. I am not responsible for my actions. I'm not responsible for the decisions that I make in life. But this is what we see taught in critical race theory. Now, the thing yeah. that's concerning to us, and I want to bring this to light, is that this is something that is taught in K-12 schools, yeah. right? Now, people will say critical race theory is not being taught in K-12 K-12 schools. Well, somebody should tell the architects of critical race theory that because mm -hmm. they themselves not only know that it's being taught in K-12 schools, but they are actually teaching educators how to teach it under the radar. Yep. So this is what I tell parents. You know, when we we watch the national conversation and people are like, oh, well, they're not teaching it because parents have gone out and parents have, have you know, they've caused a ruckus around this. I'm like, have fun with that delusion. <laughs> Go, go yeah. ahead and have fun with that delusion. Your kids are being taught ongoingly critical race theory. It is not in a class. If you show up and you ask for a binder labeled critical race theory, you won't find it. Mm -hmm. So where is it? Well, we're going to get to that today. But first, I want to kind of like take a little jog down memory lane. This is about a year ago when you had a summer school um, about critical race theory, right? But prior to that, you've got Joy Reid on her program at the time talking to Kimberly Crenshaw and talking about whether or not critical race theory is being taught in schools. And I want you to listen. If you're watching us over on YouTube, you're going to see this interaction and you're going to see it's almost appalling to be asked this question, right? Like, is critical race theory being taught in K-12 schools? But it's a deceptive outrage, right? Mm -hmm. Because what we're going to learn is that not only is it being taught in K-12 schools, but we are teaching people how to teach it <laughs> under the radar. Wow. Okay, watch this. So is critical race theory, Does is there a K-12 through curriculum <laughs> that right now is being taught? I'm sorry. I know it's a dumb question, but... Uh, is there a K through 12 curriculum on critical race theory that's being taught in schools around this country? Well, look, Joy, if it was news to most Americans that critical race theory was in K through 12, it was news to me, too. I'm one of the co-authors of one of the few books on critical race theory. I think I would know if we were being taught in K through 12. I mean, basically, critical race theory, classic critical race theory is a law school course. And it's really, you know, not taught as widely as I would hope it would. Yeah. But here's the deal. This is not about whether anything called critical race theory is in K through 12. What they're calling crit critical race theory doesn't exist anyway. It is a backlash effort to reverse the racial reckoning mm -hmm unlike any we've seen in our lifetime. And as you pointed out at the beginning, they can't say, you know, we're for racism. They can't say Derek Chauvin should have killed George Floyd with his hand in his pocket, looking like he was completely uh, without a care in the world. They couldn't mm. say that. So they 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 looked around and found a, a strange sounding theory that they could put all of the grievances and uh, resentments in and mobilize people around this boogeyman. It's a boogeyman. Critical race theory is a boogeyman. Wow. It's not being taught in schools. <laughs> you heard Kimberly Crenshaw say that. It's not being taught in schools. Wow. And it's really an attempt to stop the racial reckoning, which I, you know, my follow up question, of course, I'm not Joy Reid and I don't have <laughs> this opportunity, but my follow up question would have been so what is the racial reckoning of which you speak? Like, what, what does that mean? What does that right. look like? What, how do you, what, how are we reckoning the races? Like, what what do we want to see happening? You can see that even in this conversation, there's a type of it's time to get even. Mm. It, it's time to to bring you know the the triumph <laughs> of the race, the favored race, okay, to power. Right. And, and so so we're gonna do that. But people are there's a backlash because people don't want that. They don't want the black man to succeed, right? This is what we see coming from from her, C Kimberly Crenshaw. But can I can I can I just here for a second. All right. Mm -hmm. There's not critical race theory being taught in schools. Okay. So then why then do we have Kimberly Crenshaw inviting people to a conference that's going to teach how to teach critical race theory? Watch. Family. Did you know critical race theory summer school is starting next Tuesday, August hmm. 10th? You applied, hmm. right? What? 
Well, you must not know what's going on next week, so let me fill you in right now. We've got the OGs from the movement like Devin Carbato, Sumi Cho, Gary Peller, Rob Williams, Cheryl Harris, Gloria Lanson Billings. Wow. We've also got leading thinkers from across the academy like Luke Harris, Danny Hosang, Kate Mann, and David Blight. We've also got social justice superstars like Barbara Arnwine, wow. Eric Ward, and <laughs> Viet Thanh Nguyen. The list goes on and on. But look, summer school isn't just for academics and activists. It's for everybody. Everyone who wants to talk back against the censorship of anti-racist education. Wow. It's for everyone who wants to know the truth, to teach the truth, and to spread the truth. To apply, mm. follow the link below. So summer school um, is an opportunity for everyone mm. to get involved. It's an opportunity for everyone to become activists. I think you get the point here, but I want to show you one more promo that um, that pushed the summer school registration that was meant to get educators and academics, but then also common lay people. And then what I'm going to do, because what I did when I discovered this was I actually went to the website and I actually decided to check out some of the classes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn. So what's going to be taught in these classes. Yeah. So I'm going to come out of this video and we'll talk about what was taught in it. And again, but please keep in mind that critical race theory is not being taught in K-12 schools. Teaching and learning at CRT Summer School starts Tuesday, August 10th. And I could not be more excited about this year's program because it's a chance to engage with and learn directly from CRT giants and legal scholars. Not only is there a star-studded cast of attorneys, scholars, practitioners, and literally the greats when it comes to combating inequities. Did I mention Kimberly Crenshaw? Ooh. But there's a week-long course Wait. designed specifically Wait. for educators <laughs> where they'll have the opportunity to hear from Education? teachers who are in the classroom unabashedly teaching truth and inspiring the their classes, students. Though. Wait, it's hold not on. In the classes, hold, 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 hold up. Okay, so Kimberly Crenshaw is at the CRT summer school mm -hmm. and also educators who are unabashedly teaching mm. what? Um, Somebody's lying. Baking. They're teaching baking. <laughs> They're teaching home ec. Yes. No, they are teaching critical race theory. Now, look, let, let me let me go back here, because when you go to the website, so this is this was a summer school for last year, CRT summer school for last year. OK, mm -hmm. and this is how it's described. It was a five day conference and the sessions included. Please, please wait. OK, everyday CRT in K-12. Hmm. Wait a minute. Everyday CRT? Yeah. You want to know why? Because we've got to find natural, quote unquote, organic ways to terrorize the minds of kids, to tell them that they are perpetually oppressors or they are perpetually oppressed. I think every that day face, I think CRT. That face, you need to put that camera back on you. I mean, think about that. <laughs> like, OK, right. Like, I just I mean, I'm, I'm saying I need to see your face because, yeah, we like we've got we've got CRT being taught in everyday, natural, organic ways mm -hmm. in K-12 education. But this is, it's not in there. Hmm. Like, it's not there. Yes. The boogeyman. Here, here we go. So the CRT summer school, that is the boogeyman, okay? <laughs> everyday CRT in K-12, developing the next generation of CRT activists, learning to lead CRT empowers parents and community organizers, Educators take mm. action. These are some of the sessions. Wow. Okay. From agonizing to organizing, mm. concrete steps to fight back. Now, you could say, you know, I, I don't, I don't believe that critical race theory is being taught in schools. But can I tell you something? Not only is it being taught in schools, but it's in the air that we breathe. It is creating a type of self-loathing in our culture that is difficult to ignore. Right. Again, so this breakdown, this CRT summer school that happened last summer. All right. Um, the session that was everyday CRT and K-12. Let me read to you a description about this okay. session. OK, so just listen, because remember, it's not being taught in K-12 schools. OK, but if it were <laughs> being taught in K-12 schools, we might do a conference might on do it. A summer school. OK, and we might teach people how to not teach it. Equipping teachers to not teach for the work it. of CRT to not teach it. 
<laughs> okay, here's the description. This channel is designed to look across the broad spectrum of education and how aspects of race, particularly CRT, intersect with it. We will explore the following in our daily sessions, K-12, higher education, legislative actions, teaching, advocacy, and activism. Mm. So the teachers become the advocates, the teachers become the activists, and your students, your children, become the pawns. Mm. Your children are being taught in everyday ways wow. that something is wrong with they them. They have a, like a discipleship program going Yes, on. they do. But they wickedness. absolutely do. <laughs> now, think about that. Now, I want to show you something. This is a short clip here. But I think that this is one of those things that kind of shows you what the mental anguish of the proliferation of critical race theory looks like in popular culture. This type of self-hatred that you, you've got to declare that, that you hate your culture. You've got to declare that you hate your ethnicity, um, that your ethnicity should be victimized. I mean, look, I'm not, I am not trying to make um, an inappropriate connection to a mass shooter and people's self-loathing but we would be ignorant if we denied that this mass shooter loathed herself. Mm. And based yeah. on her own manifesto and what was her motivation behind going into the school and trying to make as many victims as she possibly could was that she saw them as privileged. Mm. Like, I mean, this is worst case scenario of what critical race theory looks like when it mentally breaks people down. Right. This is worst case scenario, but here's another scenario. Okay. So this is Julia Fox. Julia Fox was once the girlfriend of Kanye West. And unfortunately for her, that is how she will forever be known. Like this is, I mean, you know, but I want you to see what it looks like when you hate yourself and when you hate your culture, because everywhere you look, and everywhere you listen, you have been told that systemic racism is real. And you have been told that you contribute to system systemic racism. Mm -hmm. And you have been told that you can never make amends for the thing that you did, but you know inside that you didn't do anything and that you actually don't hate people, but you can't say that because if you say that, you've already been told that that's white fragility. So you can't say that you love people. You can't say that you're not racist because the culture calls for you to be an anti-racist, right? Critical race theory calls for you, Ibram X. Kendi, I'm looking at you, to be an anti-racist. And, and what's the difference? The distinction is that when you become an anti-racist, that means then you become an activist. N no, not of your yeah. own conviction, of the collectively given conviction. Right. That's, that's what you become an activist of. Okay, so here's Julia Fox. Um, this is the milder presentation of what the self-loathing looks like. Um, but when it goes unchecked, un when it goes unchecked, when it goes um, unmitigated, right? Then the outward expression of that is get rid of the oppressors. Mm. I mean, come on, like this, yep. get rid of the oppressors. Th this is why we can't read the manifesto. <laughs> this is why we're not allowed to read the, the, the diary entries. Okay, here's Julia Fox, watch. Opportunity scammer, or do you think some races deserve to be scammed more than others? Absolutely, I think white people deserve to be scammed the most. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so all marginalized people feel free to scam any white person. Wow. Yeah. Except me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Mm. Oh, white people need to be oh, scammed. Boy. Like, oh, just yeah. All all marginalized people feel all marginalized people feel free to scam white people. But not me, because I'm an ally, because I'm good, right. because be, the, the fact that I'm willing to bring this up says that I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of the good ones, right? I'm one of the ones who is attempting to make amends for the color of my skin. And also, you know, there was that Kanye West thing <laughs> where I did kind of like, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of like marginalized, you know, so not me, you know, I'm, I remember, remember Kanye? Guys, this is the time that we are living in. Yeah. This is the culture that we're in. And I cannot stress to you enough that when you send your kids off, when you are sending your kids off and you say, well, you know, my kid is going to a school where I have checked and there is no critical race theory curriculum there. Congratulations. You've just been duped <laughs> because it's woven into 
all of the way that our kids are being educated. It's the rubric for all of their classes. It's not just a history class. It's not just an English class. It's in math, right? It's in the social emotional learning. Yep. That's another one. And you, you don't think to look there, but the way we teach empathy and the way we teach kids to relate to one another, we begin at a very early age teaching that there are special classes of people and that those people need to be treated in certain ways because they're not responsible for their behavior. But but you are and you know, look, there was once a time I was reading this um, this illustration and how social emotional learning has really shifted, right? And this example was, there was once a time where if a kid had a pencil and another kid walked up and took the pencil from the kid, the mm -hmm. teacher would say, no, that's not your pencil. You need to return it. Now, what they teach kids in school is to identify whether or not the person is underprivileged. Mm -hmm. did, the, did the person need the pencil? So Who he took has it? an excuse for taking your pencil. <laughs> because we want to teach empathy. Huh. So, so you have just, you, you have just been robbed. Your question needs to be, did the person have a right to rob me? Mm. Now think about, now that's, I'm okay, yes, that's, I'm going into adultville. Yes, I am. But can you think for a second that you begin to shape these kinds of adults while they're children so that they can't discern? This is, again, and we've talked about this. This is why you've got, this is why you've got the Starbucks that are shutting down. <laughs> this is why you've got the drug stores that are leaving yeah. because people cannot identify criminals. Oh, I'm sorry, not that they cannot, but they will not because right. they have been told that they should not. Right. So look, of course, we're paying attention to this manifesto. I would imagine that there are going to be more pages that come out, but we need to be here for this conversation. We need to be here for this discussion where we ask pointed questions and we say, wait a minute, is this the result of the proliferation of critical race theory? Yes. Come and lay it at their door. Mm -hmm. Come and lay it at their door. Right. Because they will take every other opportunity to lay things at the at other people's doors. Right. Right. So <laughs> so what I'm saying is this is one of the options. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why this shooter went in and took the lives of innocent people. She left. She left the reason. Mm -hmm. and, and yet we are still protecting. The murderer, we are we are protecting the murderer. Why? Why? Could it be because we know that what she espoused is being proliferated in our culture, in our society at large? Mm -hmm. And if we expose that, if we uncover that, then you've got a lot of people who are going to have to take responsibility for that. You know, the trick behind it is they make they're making it look like they're not protecting the murderer, but the victims. Mm -hmm. And but they don't want it because because they don't want to give the murderer, you know, more of a voice to for the pages to speak. But in essence, what they're doing is hiding some things that will blow their cover, mm. the cover of the agenda. Yes. And so they're using that. Man, these people are slick. Yes. They're using that, you know, to keep it hush hush. You know, you say more pages may come. Not if the gatekeepers don't allow You're it to right come about out, that. You're you know? right about that. And they're probably mad that these pages came out. For sure. You know, so man, th this stuff is sinister. Yeah. You know, but we gotta shine the light on, yeah. on what's happening. And look, we we are here for it. We're going to continue talking about it. We've been going at this for a long time. Before it became common conversation at your mm -hmm. local Walmart, we've been talking about the ills of critical race theory, and especially as we saw it infiltrating the church. Listen, yeah. to the saints of God, man, stand up and defend and protect your children. I mean, look, first and foremost, secure your mask. Don't be given to these deceptive doctrines of demons. Don't be given to these ideologies. But then after that, secure the masks of your children. Mm -hmm. Like, don't let your kids be indoctrinated. This is how they grow up and become your enemies. Mm. This is how they grow up. Wow. And they think that you are hateful because right. they have been trained that there's a certain ideology. And if people don't fit into that, then there's everything else. And they are the haters. Mm. Guys, we can, mm. we can do better. We can do better. All right, we're out of time, so mm -hmm. we got to leave it here. Just want to say thank you so much to all of the Culture Proof supporters. Yes, If this you. ministry is a blessing to you, thank you for your financial support. Thank you for contributing to this ministry. Mm -hmm. You can learn more about how to do that by going to cultureproof.net. That's, That's right. cultureproof.net. Coming soon, we've got um, a really big, important announcement. Some additional <laughs> Culture Proof merch may be oh, on the way. Man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm super excited about that. Yes. So make sure you stick around for that. But look, here's the bottom line. When we resist those cultural trends that rival the truth, we remain culture proof. Oh, man. And we need to be. Mm. Until next time, Lord willing. God bless.